Friends, in this video, we are going to explore the possibilities of B Octa people expansion device. This patient had IFIS in the other eye. We used B Hex. In this eye, we are going to use B Octa. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratom. A side port is made on the left side of the main incision. And now, the anti-capsule is stained with tripan blue dye. I use the dye underneath an air bubble. There are many colleagues who use the dye directly. I find that if I use an air bubble, the dye is not diluted by aqueous and staining is quicker. This is a little bit of adrenaline. At this time, we see that the people size is about 4.5 to 5 millimeter with viscoelastic substance it can go up to 5 millimeter and we may think at this stage that we will it will be easy to complete the case without any pupil expansion device but during chopping and during emulsification of the pieces the people shuts down and becomes very difficult to manage this is the P Octa 8.00 people expansion device. It has four straight flanges and four curled flanges. Curled flanges gives more expansion when necessary, especially in SICS. This device has been uh, uh, designed by my friend Dr. Subhan Bhattacharji especially for SICS, but for IFIS, this is a very good device, better than any other device in my opinion. In With Maliwigin ring, you will get expansion of the people to about 6.5 millimeter, but with this one, you will get expansion about 7.5 to 8 millimeter. And these people will never Oh no. uh, shut down the people and it is a thin device it can be used in shallow anterior chamber it will never touch the cornea one problem in eye face with p hex is there in some cases there will be a component of uh, LIDRS that is lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome and whenever you go with irrigation you have already engaged the VHEX and now you go with irrigation because of reverse pupillary block the people dilates and the whole VHEX may come anteriorly it has happened to me once or twice and now let us come to this case this is at this time uh, after mm, uh, Capsulorexis, hydrodissection is done, and now the anti chamber is filled up with visco. And now I am going to use a pre chopper designed by me. Uh, this is the pre chopper with a ball tip at the end. The tip length is 1.8 millimeter, and through the main wound goes the pre chopper. It has the front is, is cutting, it also has tip length of 1.8 millimeter. The sustainer hooks the equator, supports the lens, sustains the lens, that is cataract, and the pre-chopper cuts the nucleus into pieces. We have divided the nucleus into four fragments. In soft cataract, it is much easier. In grade 3, it tends to rotate a bit, but you can manage grade 3 cataracts with pre-chopper. Uh, here goes the uh, uh, FACO handpiece. Go and pick up the pieces and start emulsifying. The second piece is picked up and emulsified. Ultrasonic energy used is about 40 percent. Flow rate is 400, vacuum is 40. And this is the hemineucleus, hold it. The sustainer goes around the equator, divides into two pieces 
and it is done. The nucleus is managed. And now the uh, cortex is remaining. There is no problem in using um, a coaxial IA. There is only one side port. I am using a 23G Simco. Since you have only one side port, either you use a coaxial IA or a 23G Simco cannula. Cortex is removed. And now we are going to implant an intraocular lens. Visco filling up the anterior chamber and the capsular bag. The main wound is enlarged a little bit just by one cut so that delivery of the nuclear uh, delivery of the intraocular lens is effortless so that the lens doesn't get stuck at the wound. And this is a nice hydrophobic lens. The lens goes in the capsular bag and now we have to place the lens in such a way that uh, we can go behind the lens and remove the visco, dial the lens, haptics are placed uh, 90 degree away from the main wound and now we are going to remove the B octa, see how it is removed. Go hold a flange which is above the iris, pull it centrally and again go over the iris and half of the B octa is in front of the iris. Now go through the side port, hold another flange, pull it centrally and again go over the iris to periphery and now the whole B octa is in the anterior chamber. Inject some visco. And now just go through the main wound through B with B hex forceps, hold the B octa at any place and gently pull it out. And see the people has come down to about 3.5 millimeter. And this is I'm going to remove the uh, viscoelastic substance. I go behind the lens, irrigate the space between the lens and the posterior capsule so that all the visco comes out from the capsular bag and now I use the bimanual irrigation aspiration. On flow should be above the iris so that the iris does not prolapse. If you, uh, if the flow is in the center of the anterior chamber, the iris will prolapse through the main wound. So irrigation is depressing the iris so that it does not prolapse. Moxie and the side port is closed by corneal stromal hydration. And then a final lavage and the anterior chamber is nicely formed with BSS. Integrity of the wounds are checked. Few drops of moxie is applied over the cornea and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention.